Hey everybody, so today we are going to be talking about some tips and tricks that I have from some very real world experiences of uh, lots and lots of conversations in the last few weeks with startups and businesses and individuals who have t been tasked with updating their business mission statements, their North Stars, their uh, product uh, vision to include AI. And it's been a whirlwind. I have been so busy um, helping folks, and this is not part of my day job. It's, you know, I have this YouTube channel where it's a nonprofit. I, I do what I do here just to help folks um, get familiar with these topics, but also as a consequence of it, um, it was not intentional. People find me and ask me for advice and, and sometimes they ask me to consult for them. And so there's a lot, a whole lot of that that's been happening. And I thought it would be helpful to make a video about the things that I have seen people struggling with the most in this space. So that if you are finding yourself in that same situation, or if you are staff at a company or on a product that doesn't have a clear statement of what they're trying to do with AI or where AI fits in their product, um, and, and the mission of, of the business, that can be really confusing and really hard if you're not familiar with where the company wants to go. So I'm hoping this video helps you in either of those scenarios. And if this sounds interesting to you, if you are maybe interested in more uh, unhinged video from me, this is your video. If this is not the type of video for you, check out the next one. <laughs> All right, so with that, let's go get started. All right, so the very first topic that comes up all the time. And I'll put a video up above um, because I made a video a while back on how machine learning is not the same as AI. And now this video can be added to that narrative, which is, and is AI and AGI different? The same thing? Is AGI a thing at all? Um, there's a lot of controversy out there as far as AGI. Is it AGI? But one of the prominent AI companies has come out saying AGI is essentially when uh, an AI is more intelligent than your your general human, or it can do more complex applications of, of actions uh, similar to humans. So there's always this comparison to humans, and I get it, it's a generalization, but there's a whole swath of things out there that humans are really good at, or really bad out specifically. Um, there's a lot of specialty knowledge in the world. So it doesn't really help me if you are saying, oh, I'm using AGI, which a lot of folks are saying they're trying to attain AGI, but some people just wonder if it's even possible. And my take on this is it's not possible until you have a proper definition in which we can measure against that definition, saying generally smarter than your average human. Okay, give me some numbers on that. How are you defining that? How are you measuring that? I'm a numbers person. We're all in data science here, folks, right? Give me your KPIs and then we'll see if you're an AGI company or not. And so like these poor folks that are talking to me, you know, they're trying their best. And so what I've seen is a lot of organizations are trying to not only say, we do things with AI in all their products, um, some of them are really just doing machine learning. Machine learning is a type, right? There's different variations of, 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 through all three of these. Um, but machine learning is nothing to sneeze at. It is a good and useful tool. There is no shame in if you're doing machine learning and not AI. So the hype is there on AI and a lot of people are trying to brand what they're doing as AI. And you know, it might be because of stakeholders, it might be because they think it's cool and sexy. But what, what I've seen is depending on your brand and what your mission statement and your core value were, core values were before, Sometimes adding AI into that, um, publicly saying like, look, we're adding AI to everything in our product offering or as a core mission of our business is actually counter to what you used to do. And I'm not saying don't use AI. Um, 
there are a lot of efficiencies that AI and machine learning for that matter bring to the table, right? So if you need to have automated tagging of documents, um, machine learning is really well respected in that space. You as a subject matter expert say these documents are about cats and then you teach the machine on the words in those documents to recognize things about cats so that when they see new documents, it knows it's about cats. But when we get into large language models, that's um, where the neural networks behind the scenes are doing a lot of things and it's not as um, clear cut on how things are, are being spit out, spit out on the other side. So you might be then asking yourself, okay, I get it. Machine learning and AI, slightly different. But then what about this AGI thing? And overall, every single one of these is confusing to businesses because if you say you're doing machine learning, maybe it's not as brand damaging or confusing to your core customers or your staff, right? If you're not doing anything that's like a public facing kind of um, product or service, maybe you're a shipping company and your internal stakeholders um, need to understand what you're doing and have confidence. You can do machine learning, but maybe they get more uncomfortable with AI because AI is not as predictable. You really have to understand what your core values were from before. And it's okay to say like, okay, now we're gonna go in a new direction, but you have to think of the optics to everyone involved because if you were, let's say, a company that really prides yourself on um, that, that human touch, if you, if you have that as your core competencies and then you say, and now we're gonna use AI for everything, um, that's probably not gonna go over well, even though there might be some efficiency. So maybe the doctors can use the AI to get um, a summary of what's going on with a patient or use AI to um, ask specific uh, questions to that patient before they come in. Like there's ways to use AI without deteriorating your main business model that you already built. That's that's what I see so much coming out of, of the woodwork on these things is people are trying to add AI into their core values when really it's just another tool in their toolbox. Hey, guess what? I got um, a bigger, uh, I have a computer that has bigger RAM now, which now I can, you know, edit videos faster. That's a tool. It, I mean, it's a MacBook and it has AI in it to do some of those things, but that doesn't matter. That's just like how it works. And while that's fascinating and interesting, and again, I'm not touching on the reproducibility of AI and how there's concerns with that and the transparency and the ethics and the responsibility. And there's a slew of things that you need to understand if something really is using AI. But in order to tag something appropriately, a feature, a function, a product, a company that is using AI, you need to have a definition that everyone sort of kind of agrees on so that when you see something, there's a whole category now in the app store on AI powered blah, blah, blah. But if you go in there and you're expecting AI and the thing is not AI, or you don't want AI and something didn't tag something as using AI, now you're kind of peeved and you're now concerned because there's all these other concerns about AI if you're one of the people that are concerned with those things. So being able to label things appropriately for what they actually are is really difficult when no one seems to agree on what these things are. So a lot of AI definitions were created before LLMs and they were still valid, but now there's quite a few that are coming up now that very specifically harness the new way that LLMs are changing the game. By the way, LLMs are not new. LLMs have been around since I think the 60s or 70s. It's only just recently that they've become so prevalently used. So it's not surprising that these, these things were not showing up in the original definitions of AI, but they now do. There is an overwhelming need for proper definitions. And if you're following along, the EU AI Act is trying to start to outline those things, but this is what they define it as. Still kind of ambiguous. And this is where a lot of folks are struggling is, are we doing AI? Do we want to do AI? Like, 
is this thing I'm doing AI? I don't know, right? So having <laughs> um, a, a clear definition is, is helpful. Now, if you're using LLMs, um, you are very likely using AI. But even then, like what's core to your product? If your core product is focused on search and you use an AI, like an LLM, to just parse the query, cool, you're using AI to parse your query, but it's not generating anything. Using an LLM for parsing a query is not much different than using a BERT model, which I would consider is more on the machine learning side, although it's still using a transformer. If you're not familiar with like what a transformer is, I have a video coming up about that soon. But it's BERT models have been around for a, for a while and they're really good and they do a great job at parsing. So you don't necessarily need to use an LLM for that. LLM is maybe overkill. Again, depends on your use case, but where do you divide the line? Are those all AI? You know, at the end of the day, you really have to understand what are your core competencies? Are you really um, focused on, on the human touch in some way? And if you are, then have something that is AI facilitated or something that um, includes AI as an efficiency step where the human input is still the primary input because it's, you know, styling someone's hair. And that's a very unique thing for your ge geographic region and for the age group of maybe your main clientele. Like there's all these like specialty pieces to good recommendations for a business depending on how big or small they are and where they're located and who, who their clientele is and all of that. So, you know, be careful. Um, don't go away from your roots, but you can have things that are powered by AI or things that are facilitated by AI and making sure that human in the loop is there. And again, this is not necessarily talking about the technical pieces that go along with human in the loop and all of those things. I'm also a big proponent of that, but if your core business is focused on humans and human interaction and the things that humans have to do, make those things more efficient, but don't lose sight of the thing that makes you a good product or a good business. And when I say that, I'm not necessarily even talking about product performance or customer satisfaction. It's more about what's your DNA? And if you are in a situation where your leadership has not given you guidance on these things, I strongly encourage you to take this video, either share it or take what you need from it to really work with them, bring this to them because um, out there in, in you know companies that have been launching new things recently, some of them kind of feel a little muddled where as someone that you know has done a lot of strategy in her life, um, I can clearly see that in the product development cycle, either that company and that product team started with like, yeah, AI everything, and then slowly pulled back on that, or they started out with a more traditional product, which I think this is the more likely of the cases, um, because products take a long time to develop. So if you've had anything that's in development for over like two or three years, AI wasn't as prominent or or as easily accessible as, as it is now. So in those cases, you started out with something that wasn't using AI, and then you tried to use AI as much as possible. And I'm not even saying one is better than the other. Um, what I am saying is that's how you are, and, and all of us as consumers are starting to see this in, in media, in video games, in um even like supply chain and other things that are going on where this, this muddying of the waters because leadership did not give a direction or direction was constantly changing because AI was constantly changing. So you don't have to go big or go home, right? I think that a lot of folks feel pressure to do that and that's where the muddying happens keep to what your core competencies are and use AI to facilitate those better, to do them better, to make your product better, not completely different. 
In some cases, you do need to make it completely different. You should experiment, find out if that's accurate or not. Um, but the core of this is stick to your roots, but also with a growth mindset, right? And be very cautious about just throwing AI into everything, making sure that you think of that hybrid approach, really thinking through where it makes sense to be used because at the end of the day, these are very expensive and a lot of decisions are being made right now in the world where AI is mistakenly thought of as the cheaper option. And unfortunately, that's not the case. And so, you know, just that that cautionary tale. Um, but I think that that's a wrap for me. There's probably a ton of other things that I'm forgetting, but there has been so many folks that, you know, they're really struggling with this. And so I wanted to impart some of the lessons learned that I've had from those conversations, things that people are really struggling with, some of the pitfalls, some of the areas where things are really working well. Um, and hopefully you can take some inspiration from this. All right. So with that, I want to thank you very much and I'll catch you next time.